We've been talking about a soft patch in the global recovery and in the Eurozone, but this week it started to look a bit less temporary. We had some uh, disturbing figures, or at least continued negative figures. Are you starting to worry that this may last longer? I think it's important that we collect this all information uh, to the next monetary policy meeting in June and then assess as a whole. <clears throat> After very strong growth we had last year, there can be little slow growth, but it's still growth. Uh, but we do the assessment in, in, uh, when the time, time comes. Do you expect at that meeting to be talking about the timetable for the path out of bond purchases, out of quantitative easing? Always our decisions are based on the latest data. But uh, uh, we have now four elements in our monetary policy stimulus. One is net purchases. Second is the stock of the assets. Third is reinvestments. And fourth is forward guidance. Of course, in time, the emphasis will move to the direction of forward guidance. But what will it mean in concrete terms? We must always wait the latest data and do the assessment together. But we've had quite a few members of the Governing Council say recently, some of the more dovish members say that they were quite keen to move ahead with the end of, of asset purchases. Is that the feeling of the Council? Do you think there will be movement on that in the meeting? I, I would say everybody speaks for himself. I, I leave my assessment to the Governing Council meeting when you have the latest data, and that's the proper way to do it. But when we look at what's going on with the economy, I guess what I'm interested in is how does it affect that judgment? Do you worry that uh, if you seem to be really pushing for the end of QE, uh, that then the policy after that becomes less credible? In, in central bank, central banks, of course, the commitment is very important. Commitment is linked to the credibility. And in this kind of situation, we are, we are coming out of very long recession, difficult period in the economy. We must have patience when we follow the pace through all the monetary policy into the economy. We must be persistent in our works. And still also, due to a lot of uncertainty, we must be prudent. So let's not rush up. Let's do it carefully. We have done right monetary policy for the last years. We have been able to turn the economy. Still, it takes time before it will be fit to, into, into core inflation. But I'm sure in time it will happen. But uh, the timing is relevant to you personally because you will be leaving the, your current office in July. Would you be surprised if the council has not said anything about the timetable for quantitative easing by then? We will, will give very careful assessment of the situation in, the, in my last monetary policy meeting, which is in the end of, the end of June. But we have no reason to react before we have the latest assessment. And let's work together and carefully. It's like uh, they always, with this kind of very long process of quantitative easing we have, we have launched, we have implemented, it's very important that every turn is carefully thought and is very well controlled. Because we have against the backdrop now of events in Italy, you have said uh, recently that you were not encouraged by what was, what was happening with the new government. What's, what's your position now? What do you see? I mean, for outsiders, it's impossible to comment on the political events in real time. We need to know and wait for the program of the government and hear then the assessments of those who have the best knowledge. But I can't, I can't say more. But when you said they were not very encouraging, what, what was least encouraging to you? <laughs> oh, of, course, of course, I mean, I mean, we still remember that Italy has uh, one record with this particular one. They have had a primary surplus, which is very strong. They have been able to finance their debt probably for a long time. And of course, uh, if that holds... But the position has loosened even before this government. The primary surplus, uh, the surplus before interest payments, uh, has actually uh, shrunk over the last few years. I, I talk about the trends for the last 20, 30 years. So that Italian debt has been relatively high all the time, but the primary surplus compared to others has been also high. And how does the situation in Italy affect any thinking around the end of quantitative easing and bond purchases? Because a lot of people out there feel, rightly or wrongly, that it's the ECB purchases that are supporting Italian bonds now. I must say, I mean, I've been there now 14 years in the Governing Council. There has not been a single case when one country would have nominated, or a situation in one country would have dominated our monetary policy think and monetary policy stance. It will be done for the whole euro area, for the old information we consider the whole euro area. 
do you, when you look at the tools, I mean, Mario Draghi has uh, presided over the creation of tools for dealing with countries that might face a serious problem of confidence in the markets. Um, do you think that the tools are there to support Italy if there were an issue? There's been so many question marks. I, I, I don't make any comment on specific countries, it's very clear. But if you had a large a country with a lot of debt that had a challenging situation in the financial markets, are you confident that the outright monetary transactions, the tools that were put in place? We, are, we, are, we have one rule that we don't comment hypothetical questions. We will see when we have the data and we take a position when it's needed. I wonder, do you think that the, what's going on in Italy has changed some of the debate about Eurozone reform? You have argued very strongly <coughs> for having collective deposit insurance in the Eurozone. To me, it's not. It's very clear that, that we need to conclude the banking union. 2012, the, the uh, heads of states were very courageous when they decided about the banking union. They have concluded single supervisory system mechanism, which now will run and, and uh, supervises the biggest banks. We have resolution system in place in European level, which also makes a progress. I think we should now conclude the whole banking union with a, a common deposit uh, insurance scheme, which is of insurance type. It means that banks should pay their deposit insurance fees on the basis of their risks. And then it would mean that even when it's complete, it would not lead to major cross-border flows. But the German uh, policy makers have shown no movement on this. They say they do not want to move to that kind of risk sharing without more effort from countries like Italy to clean up the bad debts. More efforts are needed there too. It's very clear that the, if you have a very high rate of non-performing loans, it's not only negative for your area, but it's negative for the country, for the country's concern, because the, the, it limits the capacity of the banks to lend money to the economy. Though everybody needs to, especially those who have higher level NPLs, non-performing loans, need to cut that amount down. At the same time, we need to define what is the steady state of deposit insurance scheme in the long term. Uh, President Macron is going to the summit of leaders in the European Union next month, wanting to see change and the completion of banking union. There's, uh, you think Italy has changed the calculation for Germany? Uh, I mean, it's better that they reply, but my, my experience in European issues is that when we come to this kind of historical phases, the biggest countries take their responsibilities. What other steps we will take, I don't, but, but they normally take their responsibilities. Do you think there will be concrete progress on banking union at the summit? We will see the details, but there, there, there is more than your country when you go to European Union summits. We have had major progress with the banking union. We have been able to turn the European economy. Now we need to complete the banking union and also deepen the capital markets union. Because especially that means that we can share the risk by private sector. You don't need government, taxpayers' money there. Do you, uh, uh, some people would say you changed your tone on the, on the deposit insurance because you were about to acquire in Finland um, a, a significant uh, financial institution, Nordea, moving their HQ. I, I have not changed. That's been my, my European position for the, all the time. And actually, we shouldn't look at this issue on a national basis. These national positions can change. But do you, uh, we're just thinking now about the, the future and you're, you're standing down. You'll be free to do other things. If, if asked to, be, to replace Mario Draghi, uh, would you uh, be willing? If Mario Draghi is still in office almost a year and a half. I think we should let him work and postpone these speculations. You wouldn't turn it down? I have no comment. When do you think would be a good time to decide for the markets? Not normally. It's a little more than a year from now.